أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Previously we examined the different forms of الفعل الماضي the past tense verb and also الفعل المضارع the present tense verb we also discussed the hidden pronouns and we mentioned that الفعل الماضي has how many hidden pronouns the ماضي only two for which forms he and she هو and هي الفعل المضارع has hidden pronouns for how many forms five do you remember the five? Huwa, hiya, anta, the male, ana, nahnu. These five, exactly. He, she, you, for the male, we, I. These are the verbs that have a hidden pronoun with them and we examine the different rulings about that and the examples. In our discussion, this evening, we will examine fi'l al-amr, which starts on page 35. And then we go to page 37 to look at the table. Fi'l al-amr is the imperative, we call it the imperative in English. When you issue a command in the form of a verb, we call it fi'l al-amr. First of all, how do you make an imperative in the Arabic language? Basically, you take the present tense verb, the fi'l al-mudara, which is yaf'al, this is the fi'l al-mudara. In order to change that to fi'l al-amr, first you have a hamza, the alif here, which has a hamza. The most common type is to have a kasra here. And then the fa over here. So instead of the ya, you switch it with a what? With the hamza. And then the next letter, which is the fa over here, you have a sukun on it. And then the lam will also have a sukun. Ifal. Ishrab. Ifal. This we call majzum. In the Arabic language, in Arabic grammar, we call the imperative majzum, which means it has a sukun at the end. It's called the jussif case. The jussif case, majzum. This is how you change a present tense verb into a commanding verb, an imperative, fi'l al-amr. So you have the Hamza, remember? You also have the Sukun at the end, and we call this Majzum whenever it ends with the Sukun. Yeah, you always add this Alif and the Hamza. Now sometimes there will be a Dhamma on it, we'll examine, sometimes a Kasra, but usually it comes with a Kasra. Ifal. Now how do we know, yes please, how do we know if there is a dhamma or there's a kasra on this alif here? Look at the fi'l al-mudara. This is the general rule. Whenever you find this third letter over here, which is in our example what? The Ayn. Whenever this letter has a Fatha or a Kasra, the Hamza on the commanding verb Fi'l al-Amr will be a Kasra. So let's give a few examples. We have Yashrab. 
which means to drink. What do we have on the ya? Tafatha. But look at the third letter here. Yashrab. What kind of vowel do we have on the ra? Fatha. So if you want to make this a commanding verb, it will become Ishrab. Ishrab. See? There's a kasra on the hamza. This hamza here, it's going to be Ishrab. There's a kasra. Ishrab. Not Ushrub. Ishrab. Now give me an example of a fi'l al-mudara' that has a kasra on the third letter. Any examples? Yadrib. Yajlis, yadrib. Look at yadrib. What do you have on the third letter? We call the third letter ayn al-fi'l. What do you have on the third letter? Yadrib. Kasra. We have a kasra here. So if you want to make it a commanding verb, I have the hamza over here. Should the hamza have a dhamma or a kasra? Kasra. It's going to be idhrib. So what you notice about the hamza is that when this third letter over here, or it's the second letter of the original word, we call it ayn al-fi'l. If it has a fatha or a kasra, the hamza is going to have a kasra. The second thing that you'll notice is the letter itself in the commanding verb. If it has a fatha in the fa'l al mudara it's going to have a what here? In fa'l al-amr, also a fatha. Keep the same haraka. And if it had a kasra in fa'l al mudara when you made it a commanding verb, what are you going to have here? A kasra. So this is ishrab. Because the mudara' was yashrab. This one becomes idrib because the mudara' was yadrib. So when it comes to the commanding verb, it's not confusing at all. If you know the present tense verb, you can always construct the imperative very easily. Because this letter here is going to stay the same. If it has a fatha, keep the fatha. If it has a kasra, keep the fatra, uh, the kasra. And if it has this new additional hamza, if it's a fatha or a kasra, keep it kasra in both. Is this clear? Give me some examples of fi'l al mudara Let's see how that's going to work. Give me an example of any present tense verb in Arabic. Yajlis. What else? Let's say Ya'lam, which means to know. Another one. Give me another example. Yarkud. Yarkud. Okay. Look at Yajlis. If you want to make it a commanding verb, an imperative. Start with the ya. Switch the ya to a what? Change the ya to a what? Hamza. Now I don't know if my hamza is going to have a dhamma or a kasra because these are the only the two that we have. We don't have a fatha on the hamza. Is it a dhamma or a kasra? What do you find here? A kasra. Whenever you have a kasra or a fatha, you're going to add a what? Kasra. So it's going to be i. And then write the word ijlis. The last one's going to have a sukun. The first letter is also going to have a sukun after the hamza. This is fixed in all the words. But now you're trying to figure out this letter here, the lam. Is it going to have a fatha ijlis? Is it going to have a dhamma ijlus? Or is it going to have a kasra ijlis? Kasra. Why kasra? How did you know? Because that one has a kasra? Keep the same kasra. So it becomes ijlis. 
Tell me what should I do with Ya'lam based on what we just discussed. The Hamza, what do I put on it? Kasra. The Ayn is going to be a Sukun and the Meme is going to be a Sukun. What do I do with the Lam? See, Ya'lam has a Fatha in the present tense verb. So what do I add here? Keep it Fatha. I'lam. This one is different. This one, what do you notice on the third letter, on the kaf, yarkud? It's not a fatha or a kasra. So which we, which, what we discussed doesn't apply. It has a dhamma. Whenever you have a dhamma on the third letter, what happens to your hamza? You put a dhamma. It's going to be a dhamma. And then write the word over here. This is going to have a sukun. This is going to have a sukun. Notice this, what does it have? Adhamma, put Adhamma here. Orkud. Orkud. So whenever your fi'l al this one, has Adhamma on this third letter, which is the kaf in our example, the alif, the hamza is going to have Adhamma, and the same letter is going to keep its Adhamma. Another example, Yansur. What does Yansur mean? To help, to support. Look at the word Yansur. Yansuru. Based on what we just discussed, change Yansur to Fi'l al Amr, a commanding verb. So we put the Hamza, right? Now I'm trying to figure out, am I putting a Dhamma or a Kasra on the Hamza? What am I going to put? Why Dhamma? Because you see Saad, the third letter here has a what? Dhamma. So this is going to be a Dhamma. Unsur. Unsur. Urkul. So now if you know these rulings, any Fi'l Mudara I will give you, you can easily switch it to a commanding verb and you know exactly how to do it. The second and the last one, always have a sukun in your fi'l al-amr, in the commanding verb, yes, always, that's fixed. Always has a sukun. You just need to figure out the hamza, what it has, and the third letter. So if your fi'l al-mudari' has a kasra or a fatha on the third letter, your hamza is going to have a kasra. If it has a dhamma, your hamza is going to have a dhamma. And then the third letter itself is going to follow whatever you found in fi'l al mudara The first letter can have a dhamma too, not just a kasra? The first letter which is the hamza, right? Yes. Also it's possible for it to have... Yes, like the example we gave here, yarkov is going to be urkov. It has a dhamma over there. But why did we give it a dhamma? Because the third letter here in the present tense verb had a dhamma. So whenever your fi'l al mudara and its third letter has a dhamma, the hamza of your fi'l al amr is going to have a dhamma as well. But the case, it's always going to be most likely going to have a kasra? Most words are going to be a kasra. Those words that will start with a dhamma are pretty limited. The vast majority of commanding verbs are going to start with a kasra. Why? Because the fi'l al mudari' in its third letter, it's rare to have a dhamma on it. It's mostly fatha or kasra. It's very rare to have a dhamma on it. It's a limited number of words. So that's the rule. That's how you transform a fi'l mudari' into a commanding verb, an imperative, fi'l al amr. Any questions on that? Now look at the table on page 37. If you remember the fi'l al-madi, the past tense verb, how many forms did it come in? 14. Fi'l al mudara how many forms did, it, forms did it come in? 14. Fi'l al-amr has only how many forms? 6. It only has 6 forms. Without even looking at the table, why do you think that is so? That's the case. Why does it only have six? No, without the dhamma and the kasra. Remember the past and the present, we had 14 forms. The third person, the second person, 
the first person, the plural, the singular, the dual, the feminine. So command is second person, right? See, command, automatically by issuing a command, you have to be in which person? You have to be in mukhatab, you have to be in second person. So you automatically are going to delete the six, that is what? The third person. And the two, that is? First person. So you're left with how many? Six. Six. Because there were 14, we got rid of eight, we're left with six. So automatically, you know, the commanding verb must come in only four, six forms. Because you can't have a, a, a direct command in the third person. Because when you, even in English, when you say stand, sit, you have to talk to someone to say that. So you're automatically in which person? Second person. So you can eliminate eight right off the bat. So that's why the table here has only six. Now it's showing you how to get to the fi'l al-amr. Right? Taf'alu. And then it goes to the first step, second step, third step. And then how you make a commanding verb. You don't need to confuse yourself with how the table did it. As long as you were able to follow through what, what I did on the board, you know, you know how to make a commanding verb. So just look at the six to the very last column to the left, which is if'al, if'ala, if'alu, if'ali, if'ala, if'alna. Just keep that in mind. So what are the six forms that we have for fi'l al-amr? The first form is if you're talking to one person who's a male, masculine. The commanding verb will be if al. If you want to issue a command to one person, so your subject that you're dealing with is a singular and is masculine, it's going to be if al. For example, ijlis, ishrab, urkud, unsur, i'lam, and so on and so forth. Okay. The next form that we have is if you're talking to two, then you will use the dual form. In order to make a word in Arabic, dual from singular, what two letters do you add? Alif, Alif and? Like Rajul, Rajulan. Right? You add the Alif and the Noon. So if you are addressing two, you would normally say, if Alan, right? But what do we have on the last letter of fi'l al-amr, sukun, it's majzum. Whenever you have a noon for the dual or the plural, and the verb becomes majzum, what do you do to the noon? You drop it. The noon gets deleted. So you're left with what? If ala. The Quran commands Prophet Musa and Prophet Harun, go to Fir'aun. What does the Quran say? اِذْهَبَا إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ اِذْهَبَا You too go. Originally it should have been اِذْهَبَان Right? Like يَأْكُلَان يَشْرَبَان However, فَبِأَيَّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَان But because it's مَجْزُوم فِعْلِ الْأَمْرِ We drop the noon. So it becomes اِفْعَلَ That's the second form. Ijlisa, Ishraba, Urkuda, Unsura. Now, if you, your subject that you're talking to is plural and you want to issue a command, instead of the alif, what do you add? Well, if, if alu. If'al, one person, if'ala, two, three or more, if'alu. Ishrabu, ijlisu, urkudu, unsuru. And again we drop the what? The noon. 
Because in the plural masculine, it has the noon. Mu'minun, yashrabun, yajlisun. It has the noon. But because this is majzum, we dropped the noon. Whenever a verb is majzum, that noon of plurality is dropped. So these are our first three forms. Yes. Yes, yeah, see that alif is just an extra alif that is there for calligraphy purposes, let's say. It's not part of the word. It's just the wa. It's, it's not mandatory, no. Some types of Arabic calligraphy and writing styles have it, but it's not necessary. It's not wrong to omit it. So it's up to you. You feel comfortable writing it, which the Quranic calligraphy does have that alif. And usually it has a sukun on top of it, so you know that it's not voweled. It's not, it's, it's a silent letter. This is not if alu wa, no. It's a silent letter. So that's why you will see in many books it's deleted, just for the sake of clarity. That's not a pronounced letter. So if alu. That's the first three. The fourth form, if your subject whom you're addressing is a single female, you would use the form if Ali, if Ali, ijlisi, ishrabi, urkudi, unsuri. Now in your mudari', the present tense, do you remember the form for the Third person female? The, the, the second person? Taf'alina. Tashrabina. It had a noon. Notice that in fi'l al-amr, what did we do to the noon? We dropped it. So that noon of the female is also dropped. In the fi'l al-mudara', the second person female, we had a noon. Tashrabina, ta'kulina, tajlisina. We dropped that. Over here it becomes ijlisi. Originally it was ijlisina, but because of the jazim, we dropped it. That is the sign of jazim. In your words like this, the single one, the sign of jazim is a sukun. But over here, in these other words that have a pronoun attached to them, the sign of jazim is the deletion of the noon, is the omission of the noon. So that's the first, the fourth form. Would ya be the sign of, um, What's that? Would the ya be a sign that it's for females? Yes, that ya over here, in fi'l al-amr, in the commanding uh, verb, is a sign of femininity. That your subject that you're addressing, the subject whom you're addressing, is a single female. The fifth form is if you have two females whom you're addressing, it's identical to what? If you have two males, so it's going to be if ala. Just like what? Notice. In the mudara and the mother we had the same scenario, in which in the second uh, uh, person and in some of the other forms they were identical. So if ali and if ala. See? Identical with this one, same. So if you have two men and you want to tell them, sit down, what do you tell them? Ijlisa. And if you have two females whom you're addressing, what, are you gonna, what, what do you say to them? Same thing, Ijlisa. This is the fifth one. And the very last one, if your group whom you're addressing is a plural group of females, all female group, and it's plural, it's going to be what? If alna. Notice that the noon over here does not get dropped. It stays. Because if you drop it, it's going to be if al. And if it becomes if al, it's going to be just like the singular man. So how do you distinguish it? So we keep the noon. It's still majzum, by the way, but we just don't show it. <laughs> we 
because we can't. If we want to delete the noon, we run into a confusion. If alna, ajlisna, or kudna, unsurna, and so on. The Allah says in uh, in Surah Al Ahzab, Allah used this very frequently. Yes, it will have a fatha, but the word is majzum. The word itself is in the state of jazm. Is it the second to last letter? The lam? Yes, the this one. So if al, see that one has the sukun. If al, na, it does have the sukun. But we don't drop the noon. وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتُكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهَلِيَةِ وَأَقِمْنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتِينَ الزَّكَاةِ Yeah, Allah uses this commanding verb in Surah Al-Ahzab very frequently when referring to the wives of the Prophet So these are really the six forms that you need to know for what? For the commanding verb. Any questions on that? Now you've mastered fi'l al-madi, past tense verbs, fi'l al-mudara, present tense verbs, fi'l al-amr. Now, as we are speaking about the commanding verb or the imperative, fi'l al-amr, in Arabic, we have a form of command for the third person. See, normal commands are in second person. Get up, eat, drink, do this, do that. In English, if you want to issue a command in the third person, how do you, how do you phrase it? You're issuing a command, but the command is not for the person whom you're talking. No, it's for a third person, a third group, an absent group. How do you say that in English? They should, let them, they should, right? If you are issuing a command to a group that's not present, you say, they should drink, they should eat, let them eat, let them drink. That's a command. It's a command really, because you're issuing a command. But it comes in the form of they should, let them. How do we say that in Arabic? You're close, you just add one letter, but it's not a fa. Not a scene. Yes, we call it Lam al Amr. We just add an L to the word and we keep it majzum. It becomes a command in the third person. Let's work with some examples. So let's say you want to address the person in the second person. And you want to tell him, drink. How do you say that in Arabic in the second person? Ishrab. Ishrab. Now let's say you want to say he should drink. Liyashrab. Just add an L and then bring the which form? Fa'l al mudara. So you need the ya. Yashrab is your fi'l al mudara form. Keep that form, add a lamb to it. Liyashrab and make it majzum. Liyashrab, meaning he should drink. You're issuing a command to a third person to drink. That's how you issue such a command in English. So this one in English is just drink. This one, he ought to drink or he should drink. This lamb means he should. Okay, this is if your subject is singular, male. If now your subject is two males, how do I say it? Liyashraba. Delete the noon. Why do we omit the noon? It's majzum. It's a command. Liyashraba. You find this table on page 40. Yeah. Liyash Raba, if it's two. If it's a plural male group and you want to say they should drink, how do you say it? Liyash? 
ليش ربو and we omit the noon if you want to issue a command to let's let's work with this let's refresh our memory with the second person if you want to address a group of men and tell them drink in Arabic what do you say to them Ishrabu, right drink what if they're not present and you want to issue a command to them and they're absent in the third person and you want to say they should drink what do you say Liyashrabu. So you add an L and you keep the fi'l al mudara form. Liyashrabu, it means they should drink. Liyashrabu. That's why it's the third person if they're not present? Yeah, if they're not present. Meaning in English you're saying they should drink. But if you're talking to them directly and they're present and you want to tell them drink, how do you say it in Arabic if you have a plural group of males? Ishrabu. Ishrab, ishraba, ishrabu. Now when it becomes third person, it becomes liyashrab, liyashraba, liyashrabu. Okay, now if you're referring to, now remember this lamb, because it attaches to fi'l al-mudara, it's going to come and attach itself to all the 14 forms of fi'l al-mudara. All the 14 forms that we discussed, you can attach the lamb. There are 14 forms for fi'l al-amr. For fi'l al-amr with the lamb, yes, in the third person. In the second person, in the normal fi'l al-amr, we only have six. But if you attach the lamb and it becomes third person, in fact, you can attach it to all 14 forms. So the first three is li ashrab huwa. Liyashraba, them two males. Liyashrabu, a group of males. Now switch to feminine, third person. If you want to say she should drink. Now, she, third person, what was the fi'l al mudara? Tashrab. So add a lamb. Litashrab. She should drink. If there are two. Litashraba, same as the male. And then. If you're referring to a group of females in the third person, what was the mudara' form? Yashrabna was the mudara'. So add a lamb. Liyashrabna. Liyashrabna means they, females, should drink. Remember the 14 forms of the mudara'? You can attach the lamb to it and make it a command. But this command is not in the second person. It's going to be in which person? It's going to be in the third person. So regardless of man, male or female, masculine or feminine, you adding lam at the beginning. Yes, regardless, regardless of singular or plural, masculine or feminine, you just add a lam in the beginning. The because it's, yes, it, it's, it's Amr, Sukun, Majzum. Okay, so that's the third person. That's six that we covered, which we did not get. Now the next six in the Mudara is what? The first six in the Mudara were third person. This next six that we discussed before were in which person? <laughs> no, not the Mutakallim is the very last one. <laughs> Mukhatab. Okay, so the Mukhatab. Can you attach a lamb to it? No. no. So if you want to issue a command in second person, what do you do? Exactly, the Hamza form. So those six, the lamb obviously is not going to attach to them because uh, you're talking to them. So it doesn't make sense to add the lamb to the second person. So the second person, we already have the Hamza for it. So the lamb then, Here's what I want you to know. Does the lamb attach to all 14 from the fi'l al-mudara? No. The six for the mukhatab, cross them out. Okay, after the six, what are you left with? Two for first person. Can you add the lamb to it? Yes, you can. For example, if you want to say, we should drink. What was the fi'l al-mudara of we? 
نشرب add the lamb to it لنشرب what does لنشرب mean? we should drink and if you want to command yourself from third person what do you say? لأشرب I should drink so that's the only way you can command yourself or a group that you're in by going through third person exactly if you want to command yourself first person or the third person absent group you would use the lamb and if you're commanding someone who's in front of you you use the second person which is the Hamza that way we covered all 14 six of them the Hamza takes care of it the eight the lamb takes care of them is that clear or is this confusing I know we're dealing with many forms but you get the idea right any examples in the Quran of this lamb? This lamb, the, the L that attaches to a word and makes it a command. Do we have examples from the Quran? Is Liyakunu an example or not? I don't know. No, that Liyakunu is a different lamb. Okay, how many of you have memorized Surat Quraysh? Li'ilafi Quraysh. Okay, can you remember a word in that surah which has the slam? لِيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ Allah says لِيَعْبُدُوا Allah is, talk, is, is commanding Quraysh. See, what was the mudari' يَعْبُدُونَ وَيَعْبُدُونَ means what? They worship. So if Allah is telling them they should worship the Lord of this house. Li'abudu. And where's the, what happened to the noon? Why did we drop it? Because of it's majzum. So yes. Yes, exactly. That's another uh, example that we have. So we have multiple examples in the Quran. This is a lamb that's actually very common that we have. Another one is Waltanvur Nafsun Ma Kadamat. Yamvur, see. So if you want to issue a command and say, he should see, it should see, Waltanvur Nafsun. A nafs should see what it has prepared for the Akhirah. وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ ثُمَّ لِيَقْضُوا تَفَثَهُمْ وَلِيُوفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ وَلِيَطَّوَّفُوا Many examples in the Quran. But the simplest one is this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Yes. Did I, did I say وَلِيَعْبُدُوا in the beginning? Yeah, there's a thought. Well, but it's just, it's just a conjunction, it doesn't change the word. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا They should then worship the Lord of this house. Any questions on this? So now you know all forms of the Maadi, Mudari' and the command, which is Fi'l Al-Amr. And remember Fi'l Al-Amr, you use the Hamza for which forms? For the second person. The second person. And how many do we have in the second person? How many forms? Oh. Out of the 14, how many of them are in second person? Four, right? Two more. Six. Right? Because you have the singular, the dual and the plural. Masculine, feminine. That's six. Okay, what about the other eight? If you want to issue a command in the third person or first person, what do you add to the mudara? Lam. Lam al-amr. This is called the commanding L, the imperative L. And it becomes fi'l al-amr. Now in section three on page 43, the author now discusses Al-fi'l al-majhul. This is the passive voice verb. One type of verbs that we have is the passive voice. 
Give me an example in English of a passive verb. English? Yeah. It was eaten. See, the subject is not known. When it comes to passive verbs, the subject is not known. In Arabic, we call these types of words, verbs majhul. Majhul means what in Arabic? Unknown. So basically, al-fi'l, al-majhul is passive verbs in which the subject is unknown. It was eaten. Let's examine the forms that we have for this verb. Basically, it's very easy to make a verb into passive in Arabic. Very, very easy. It's easier than English. Because in English, you really have to like know. Um, eat becomes eaten. Play becomes played, for example. No becomes known. It's kind of tricky. You have to learn it. Arabic, very simple. In Arabic, if you want to make a verb passive, majhul, bring the past tense verb. Give me an example of a past tense verb. Fala. Just any, any past tense verb. Shariba. Let's say shariba. Shariba. To make any verb, in Arabic, passive, write the same exact letters. No changes to the letters are made. The only change that you make is the first letter, which is the sheen, make it a dhamma. Put a dhamma on it. And then keep the rest the same. Shuriba. Shariba means drank, he drank. Shariba means it was drunk. Drunk or drank? What do they say? Drunk. drunk. Was drunk. See English, it's tricky. Arabic, very easy. I mean the form is very easy. If you know the verb shariba, just make the first one dhamma, that's it. It becomes passive. Very simple, straightforward. Another example, dharaba. Varaba. Based on what we have said as a rule, how do I make it passive? Dhuriba. Dhuriba. The first letter will always have a dhamma. The second letter will always have a kasra. And the last letter, last letter always has a fatha. Very straightforward. Dhamma, kasra, fatha. That's all. And this applies to all the forms. Yes. All the forms of past tense, yes. All the forms of the past tense, just keep the same letters. For the harakat, the first letter is always going to have a dhamma. The second letter is always going to have a kasra. The third letter is going to have a fatha. The word kasara, does anyone know what kasara mean? Kasara, he broke. Now say broken, make it passive. Based on what we stated, what is it going to be? Kusira, right? Dhamma, kasara, fatha. Okay, in Arabic now, tell me how to say it was known. So your madhi is alima, start from there, from the madhi, switch it to the majhul. What is it going to be? Yeah, alima is the madhi, make it majhul. Ulima. It was known. Alima means he knew, ulima means it was known. See? Straightforward. So all the forms of the past tense verb, you can just apply this rule to it and it becomes a passive verb. In Arabic we call this fa'il majhul because the subject is not known. 
And this is found on page 43. Okay, let me ask you the following. State in Arabic that a group of men were beaten. How would you say that? A group of men were beaten. So look at the Mali. Which form do we use to say they hit? How would you say that in Arabic? They hit. Barabu. Right? Wouldn't you say Barabu? Va, ra, bu. Make this passive now. They were beaten. Based on the rule that we just stated, what do we need to do? Add a what to the, the first letter? Vamma. The next letter? Kasra. And then, that has a fatha, but because it's attached to the wow, we don't show the fatha. It becomes Doribu. Doribu. That alif, as I said, is not part of the word. You, we could just delete it. For the sake of clarity, we could just delete it. Okay. Now, if I want to see, a, if I want to say a group of females were beaten, think for a moment, how do I say that? Remember the past tense verb. How do I say they hit, and I'm referring to a group of females, they hit, how would I say that in Arabic? Darabna. What does darabna mean? They group of females hit. Now if I want to make that passive and say they were beaten, how would I say that? Doribna. See, darabna. Va rab na will become vo rib na. So the only thing that you're changing is what? The first two, really. The third one always stays the same. If it's a fatha, it's going to be a fatha. If it's varabu with a wow, it's going to be a dhamma, it's going to be a dhamma. If it's, there, if it's a sukun, darabna, it's going to be a sukun, doribna. The third letter stays the same as the Madi. The first one becomes a Dhamma, the second one a Kasra. Clear? Any questions on that? See, the last letter it's going to be exactly like the last letter of the past tense. If it's a fatha like daraba, yes, it will be daraba. But if it's like this one, a sukun and a noon, barabna, it's going to be doribna. Same thing. So the ending of the passive verb is exactly like the ending of the past verb. No difference. So on page 45, look at that table of 14. This is taken directly from the past tense table, but we just made it into passive. Any questions? Straightforward? Yes, Alladina Yavununa Annahum Mula. No, that one is not passive. That one comes from the uh, verb which means Mulaqi, which means to meet, two way meeting. We'll examine that inshallah later in the class when we look at the different forms. Uh, that comes under the weight Mufa'il, like Muqatil. Mulaqi. That's not uh, passive, that's active. Like you meet. If it was passive, it would have been Mulaqawn. Mulaqawn. Yeah, that one Mulaqi is not. 
انهم ملاقون ملاقو انهم ملاقو ام الذين يظنون انهم ملاقو نو اتس مضارع اند ذا ريزن واي وي دروب ذا نون از بيكوز اوف اضافه ملاقو ربهم ملاقون ربهم ات واز اوريجينالي ملاقون ربهم بت وين يو دو اضافه ذا نون جيتس دروب سو اتس نو اتس ا مضارع فيرب ملاقي يلاقي اتس 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 نوت ا ماضي اتس 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 اون ذا ويت اوف مفاعل Uh, which is a noun actually, it's not a verb. No, it has the meaning of a verb, just like the ism fa'il. Um, it has the meaning of the, like darib, right? Darib means the one who hits. It has the meaning of the verb, but technically it's a noun. Yeah, it's, it's a noun, it's not a verb. But it has the meaning of the verb, which means to meet. So this is the past tense verb and how we make it into passive. And remember, passive verbs are very important. We use them all the time. A decision was made, right? And so on and so forth. A person was killed. We don't know who the killer is. Qutila, so and so person. What does Qutila mean? Qatil is a killer. But if I were to say a person was killed, but I don't know who the killer is. I want to say it in a passive sense. I would say قُتِلَ Yeah. قُتِلَ means he was killed. قَتَلَ means he killed. And the killer is قَاتِل. Okay. The same concept that we just applied to the past tense verb, apply it to the present tense verb, and you will make Passive verbs in the present tense. So ulima, it was known. But if you want to say it is known, how do you make a passive verb like that? Very simple, straightforward. This is how this is achieved. So take the fi'l al-mudari' like ya'lam. Ya'lamu. Change this to passive, just like the past tense verb. What do you put instead of the fatha? Dhamma. The rest is going to be the same. Yu'lamu. What's the difference between ya'lam and yu'lam? He knows. First person, uh, third person, singular. And what's the meaning of it? Ya'lam. He knows. What does yu'lam mean? Make it passive. He was known. Yes, he was known. It was known. It was known. In English, we don't say he was known. We say it was known. No, it was. It, it is known. Yes. This is, it is known. It's in the present tense verb. Did I say it was known? Yeah. No, no, it is known. Can we, once again, just, so. See, let's, let's start with the madhi, the past tense, so we can see the present tense. So we have alima. Actually, let's uh, use another verb that makes this clearer, because it is known and he is known gets, might confuse us. Shariba. Shariba. What does shariba mean? He drank. He drank. Right? If you want to say it was drunk, the milk was drunk, and I don't know who drank it. How do you change this to passive? Write the same letters, and then what haraka do I put here? Dhamma, and then? Kasra. And the last one is going to be the same. So if it's a fatha, what do I put here? Fatha. Shuriba. Shuriba means it was drunk. Okay. Now let's deal with the, this is the past, right? Now let's do the present. The present tense. You have yashrabu. Yashrabu. What does yashrabu mean? Um, he drinks. He drinks. 
make this passive, unknown, keep the same letters, what do we do with the first letter? Put a dhamma, and then the rest keep it the same. Yushrabu, what's the meaning of yushrabu? It is being drunk now. Or let's say you want to say the door is being broken. Tuksarul babu, tuksaru, right now. Same? Is that form used in the Quran? Do we have the word yuraddu? Yuradduna ila alam al ghaybi wa shahada. Yeah? Yuradduna. They will be taken back. That is this form. Thumma turadduna ila alam al ghaybi wa shahada. Turadduna means what? Turaddu is in the second person, right? Where you're talking to them. And rad means to go back to something, right? Turadduna ila. You will be taken back. But see, it's passive, it's unknown who the fa'il is. Yes, it is found in the Quran. Taruddu, turaddu. See, the, 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 the mudhara' is tarudduna. Tarudduna means what? You send back, you go back to. Make that passive, turadduna. See, the original mudhara' was what? Tarudduna. Tarudduna means what? You go back to or you send back to. Make that passive. Turadduna. You will be sent back to. So yes, we do find that in the Quran. So the same that we discussed about the madhi applies to the mudhara'. And you find this... On page 45 and also the pages after it. We have the Fa'l al Majhul, we have the Madhi and the Mudara. On page 45, you will find Al Mudara al Majhul. And on page 43, we have Al Madhi al Majhul. All the 14 forms of the mudhara' come in the passive form and all the 14 forms of the madhi come in the passive form. So the passive form we have 14 for the present and 14 for the past. And you will find that on page 45 and page 46. Fu'ila, fu'ila, fu'ilu. Fu'ilat, fu'ilata, fu'ilna. And the following the patterns. And then on page 46 you have Yuf'alu, yuf'alani, yuf'aluna, tuf'alu, tuf'alani, tuf'alna, and so on and so forth. Is this passive clear or no? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah, it's clear when we're doing exercise with you, but it's a lot to take in, at least for me, I don't know. Yeah, it's quite a lot of forms. Yeah. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin.